number 14 all right tanya eminger against kianzad kianzad didn't make weight so it was not a title fight like it was planned to be i guess that's kind of a good thing since eminger beat kianzad if kianzad won she wouldn't have got the title and that would have been that would have been horrible if she actually beat her and then she didn't get the title I, I guess you want to run regardless maybe that sets up a rematch but Evanger basically comes in, does what I expected her to do. She has fought the higher level of competition. She has more experience. You know, they call her the triple threat. She went in, she grinded it out, and uh, she got the win. So congratulations, Tanya Evanger, for your win. So anyways, uh, Invicta FC, I just want to touch bases on that real quickly. We do have a lot to talk about tonight. So I'm going to talk about... What's trending right now on social media? And you all know what it is. And then we have two fights coming up this weekend, so I got to talk about that as well. But let's get into what's trending right now. If there's one thing that's being talked about more than anything else right now on social media in the MMA world, it's Nick Diaz, Mr. 209 himself, about blazing them trees. You know what I'm saying? So what we have here, folks, is what I would like to call a good old-fashioned witch hunt per se let's go with the per se i don't even know what that means but i like how it sounds so we're going with it they want to make an example of diaz he's been on or i should say not on but before the commission for the same thing marijuana metabolites of course he's got his defense to you know do what they do which is defend him and plead the case about how the contents of the specimen sample was not taken properly this that, other thing but you know what i'm not going to talk about that i don't want to talk about his past and the decisions that he has or has not made whether they're good bad or indifferent it's about the nevada state athletic commission trying to make an example of him and i think all they really did is poke the bear on this there are so many people that are in an uproar right now. Whether or not I personally back it up or not is irrelevant. It's the fact that the whole MMA community, for the most part, is backing him up. The whole hashtag Free Nick Diaz, uh, as King Mo calls it, the movement. So, you know, I, I mean... I can't say I agree with what happened. I get the disrespect, right? They're trying to say he disrespected the commission because of lying on his, uh, what's the terminology, the pre-athletic questionnaire, you know, asking if he's taken anything type thing, and he's he said no, or however he answered it. So they're saying he's lying to the commission and this and that. But Pat Lundvall is, like, going out full steam, and it probably doesn't help that Diaz pleads the Fifth Amendment 27 times. Count it. I don't even have that many fingers to do 27, but that's what he did. His lawyer interrupts the commission to say, look, you're just trying to make my client look like a knucklehead in so many words. I'm, I, you know, I'm dumbing it down a little bit. And then, but of course, Commissioner Lundvall is saying, we're gonna ask these questions because we want them on the record. And I like how Nick says it too. He just goes, I plead the fifth. He just goes, Fifth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Fifth Amendment. It's it was kind of comical. I felt bad. You know, I, I feel bad for Nick because I truly think he is one of the best fighters that we've had. We've never got to see his full potential, I think. He has made some questionable choices along the way. But I've always liked Nick. I've always liked, especially he's he is a true, he's like the fighter's fighter you know what i mean like if mma didn't exist he would still be somewhere fighting he would be setting up 
on a co-main event with Kimbo Slice in someone's backyard beating people up for lunch money. You know, and that's the kind of guy he is because he loves fighting that much. And that's what I like about him. You have fighters, you have athletes, you have maybe people that want to fight, maybe they can't. I, I don't know. You have all these different levels. You know, fighters with fight, uh, what they call like a fighter IQ. Like GSP has a high fighter IQ. He's very smart. He's very cerebral. And I'm not saying I'm the biggest GSP fan, but I think you guys, you know, you know where I'm at. You know where I'm at on this. So in any case, that's what's been burning on social media, primarily Twitter. Twitter's on fire with it. There's a lot of people backing him up. People off the top of my head, even Ronda Rousey was backing him up at the press conference in Melbourne talking about it. King Mo, Kung Lee, uh, Gina Carano. I mean, these are just some that I ran across. I mean, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of, of not just people. Obviously, there's a ton of people, but fighters as well. I think Michael Chiesa even uh, started or, or sent a link to do a petition. So it, it's, it's caught that much fire right now. Now, whether or not this is going to do anything, who knows? And then Henry Cejudo, Cejudo, I don't know how to pronounce his name because I suck at pronouncing names, but you know what I'm talking about, the ex-Olympian that's now in the UFC. He said he will not fight Vegas. Really? You're not going to fight? You're, you're pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you'll fight Vegas. You know why? Because the company you work for is based in Vegas. And when your boss says you're fighting in Vegas, I'm pretty sure you're going to fight in Vegas, unless you just don't want to fight anymore. But I, I appreciate you know, the backing of the Diaz brother. I, I get it. I get it. But you're fighting the Vegas, bro. Trust, trust me on this one. Trust me on this. So anyways, that's what's going on. It's been going crazy. And like I said, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with the commission. That's for sure. I don't necessarily agree with all the decisions Nick has made. But And then Lundvall motions for a lifetime ban initially. Thankfully, the other commissioners on the on the commission board were reluctant to jump on that wagon because that would have been disastrous. I know there's going to be an appeal coming. We know that. It's going to happen. Um, so we just have to wait and see how this plays out. Hopefully everything all works out. I would love to see I don't want to see Nick finish his career like that. That's horrible. Who wants to see an athlete finish off his career because of a ban? You know what I mean? It's. I know it happens. It's happened in different sports, but I never like to see that. let let him go out on the, you know, go out on the limb, go out on his own terms, you know. So in any case, let's move on this weekend. Before we get into the big event, let's go with the World Series of Fighting. Not that it isn't a big event, but not quite as big as the other one that we got coming up. World Series of Fighting, we're back in Arizona. Now, I'm just going to cover the co-main event and the main event. The co-main event is actually kind of interesting. So here's what we have. Co-main event, we got David Branch against Teddy Holder. And people, who's Teddy Holder? That's, that's a very good question. Who is Teddy Holder? Well, let me tell you who Teddy Holder is if you don't remember. Teddy Holder is the gentleman that came in last minute to replace Matt Hamill against Tiago Silva. Matt Hamill was supposed to make his World Series of Fighting debut back in... April or whenever it was, March, May, somewhere around then, and he ended up getting a sinus infection. I want to say it was like the day before, like weigh-ins, before weigh-ins, something like that. So Teddy Holder steps in pretty much on 24 hours notice, fights Tiago Silva, who's no slouch, and he actually gets a win. And it was a stoppage of all things. So now Teddy Holder becomes this name. So who's David Branch going to fight? Hell, let's give him Teddy Holder, you know? Let's give him a title fight. What the hell? So that's who Teddy Holder is. David Branch, obviously UFC vet. Uh, pretty pretty good fighter. You know, he beat Yushin Okami not too long ago. I think that might have been his last fight. Now he's going to fight Teddy Holder. I have to give the advantage to David Branch. David Branch is definitely, he's been on the big stage longer. He has seen more top-level fighters. He is the current champion. I think he's a more well-rounded fighter. There's always a puncher's chance. I think Teddy probably has a little bit more power than Branch, but I'm going to have to go with Branch on this. Uh, TKO stoppage, round three. That's what I'm going with. So you let me know what your picks are. That's what I'm going to go with on that one. The main event is actually a rematch of earlier in the year, about six months ago, I believe it was in March, and it was in the same place. It was in Arizona, the same place this one's at. And it is Justin Gaethje against Louis Palomino, also known as the Baboon. This was actually a very interesting fight. It was an exciting fight. Uh, it ended up going three rounds. Justin Gaethje got the TKO stoppage on that one. 
Uh, I see this going a little bit different. I think Justin will finish him in two rounds this time. I think Justin's going to come in a little more refined, more finesse, picking and choosing his shots, not taking so much damage because the last time it was a barn burner. Justin's still undefeated. I see him staying undefeated. Sorry, Luis. I find uh, Justin winning this by TKO stoppage, round dose. So that's how the World Series of Fighting is playing out this week. And it's going to be on Friday. And it's free, like always, on your NBC Sports Network, NBCSN. And it's usually a uh, come. Oh, Chel Sonnen is commentating this weekend. First time ever for World Series of Fighting. That's going to be exciting. So let's talk about the other fight that's on this weekend. And that's on Saturday. And that's Bellator Dynamite. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. It's unique in many different aspects. But let's look at the, the most obvious thing. Bellator MMA and Glory Kickboxing under one roof. One roof simultaneously. I don't know if the fights are actually going simultaneously, but both perspective arenas cages rings are set up at the same time i would assume they're going to alternate if they're if they're actually simultaneously i think one would distract from the other but i don't know i'm not 100 percent certain on that but in any case it's interesting nonetheless i like it i think it's going to be exciting but we'll see what happens the other thing about this that kind of makes this an important event and more so for scott coker is this is his first event back in San Jose since he's become the old head honcho at Bellator. I've been waiting for this. Scott Coker being the old president of Strike Force, Strike Force being based out of San Jose. I've been waiting for them to come back to San Jose. So now it's finally here and I'm excited for it. I'm, it's it's just so it's awesome. I love the Shark Tank, the HP Pavilion or now it's the SAP something or other. It's always known as the Shark Tank in my mind. San Jose is where the Sharks play. I love that arena. It's nice the way that it's set up. You get a pretty much a good seat anywhere in the house. But I'm excited to see this. The other thing that makes this an interesting night is it has a one-night four-man tournament for the light heavyweights. Now that's an interesting aspect of this as well. I haven't remember seeing a, a tournament in the States in one night in quite some time. But I could be mistaken, so correct me if I'm wrong. I don't mind. You can do it. So in any case, let's start off with one of the glory matches. Our boy Fernando Gonzalez is going to be fighting against Paul Daly. Fernando's coming in as a heavy underdog, obviously, because this is a kickboxing fight. And Paul Daly is known as a striker, so that takes out the whole ground game out of it. So... Paul's going to have a huge advantage, I think, on this. But Fernando wasn't dumb. He goes, look, I'm doing you guys a favor. If I get this upset, give me a title shot. Kudos, man. That's that's working the game, you know? So I'm looking for an upset. I think Paul's going to win this, unfortunately. But I would love to see Fernando get the upset. But I'm going to have to take Daly on this. He's just so explosive on the feet. And now he doesn't have to worry about the takedown. I mean, this is his element. So... I, I expect this to be a, a, a difficult night for Fernando, but I really want to see him pull this off. But I will take Paul by uh, either knockout or TKO. Back to the MMA side. Let's start with the tournament. We have the light heavyweight tournament. Four guys. We got Linton Vassell, King Mo, Emmanuel Newton, and the long-awaited homecoming for Bill Davis, he gets to make his Bellator debut. Now, this is what I'll say. I think Linton Vassell is probably the dark horse. He's probably the least known fighter of these four. The big favorite, probably going to be Phil Davis because of his resume coming from the UFC, fighting the level of fighters that he has fought. I think he's going to be the favorite in this. But I think the guy to watch out for is King Mo. And the reason why I say that, his wrestling is just... He knows how to use it. He, he, he takes his wrestling base and he uses it so well in the MMA game. I'm not saying it's the most exciting thing, but it works. So King Mo gets to face off against Linton Vassell in, in the round one and Emmanuel Newton against Phil Davis. Whoever wins between those two prospective matches, they get to fight each other for the light heavyweight tournament 
And that's how that's going to go down. So we'll see how that brackets out. The main event is for the light heavyweight title, and that is Tito Ortiz against Liam McGarry. Liam McGarry is the gentleman that stole the belt from, or I should say stole the belt, but won the belt from Emmanuel Newton. So Emmanuel Newton, he wants to get his eye on the prize. You know, he wants to get back in that game. So Liam McGarry is going to do his first title defense, and he goes against the old seasoned vet. I mean, he's about as seasoned as you get. Probably one of the longest reigning active MMA fighters at all right now of, of any promotion. Tito's been fighting since, I want to say, 1997. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. That's a long time. I don't think there's anybody that's actively fighting that's been fighting longer than him, at least on a professional level. So, in any case, um, I don't know. I really don't know. It depends on what Tito Ortiz shows up. If he plays it smart, if he's able to get the takedowns and grind it out, I can see him grinding out a win and winning another world title. I know it's crazy to say 2015 and then Tito Ortiz becomes a world champion again. Crazier things have happened. I mean, look, Andre Arlovsky is in the title contention right now and heavyweights in the UFC. So let's not think that this is an impossibility here, folks. Uh, Liam McGeary, I don't know if he's really been tested all the way. Emmanuel Newton, I would have to say, is his, his hardest fight to date. He did beat him, but Tito has definitely faced the best of the best. Not that he's beaten the best of the best, but he has definitely faced the best of the best. So it'll be interesting to see. If, if I had to take a pick, I think I'll go with Tito grinding out a win. I think he gets him down, gets in his guard, pounds him out. I don't think he's going to finish him. I don't think it's going to be finished a la Ryan Bader in a crazy guillotine. I don't see that happening, but it is possible. Anything could happen. It's going to be an exciting night, and it's free on Spike, which is great. So they don't have any pay-per-views, at least that they're doing at this point. So, right now, all the Bellator fights are on Spike. You get to watch it. Anyways, that's our show for the week. I do want to give a big shout-out to all the sponsors that we have. Living Fat, Mama's Boy Apparel, Unique Kennels, Team DFX, who does our website, and, of course, Four Rings Race Group. They're always hooking us up with shirts so I can get them out to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the support. Last week's show did great. It's still getting views. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, afternoon, morning, whatever time it is for you. And I'll see you next week.